Okay, so if Victoria's Secrets models are being cheated on, can we all agree that the cheating is never the part of the person being cheated on and it's a problem with cheaters? Hey everybody, welcome to the show. Um, today is episode 95. We will be planning October projects. Um, <clears throat> We are in for storms today, so I'm going to try to do this quickly before, um, that's why it's so dark outside. It's 1230 and it's, I think it's going to storm. Okay, so I am wearing my DK knit top and the base is Knit Picks Kotlin and I believe the color is Nightfall. Nightfall. Um, and I do like this space. Like I said before, I don't work with cotton a lot, so I can't really speak to how it um, behaves as a cotton. Um, um, I know that I've talked about my pain issues before, and I actually like this that it's not snug at all. It's like. I use non super washables because they snug up and this like got a little bit bigger but it still covers and it, it's not supportive at all none of these tops are supportive they just cover um, but I also like that it's not too tight on my stomach which is where a lot of my pain is there is a broken down 18 wheeler outside of my house on the main road so if you keep hearing the, I think it's the air brakes, <laughs> like there, my husband said there was a loud, like crunching sound and it's right outside our house. <coughs> anyway, I hope you can't hear that, but you probably can. Um, <coughs> I can't do anything about it. I don't know how long they're going to be there. I'm crossing my fingers that the, um, landscapers are going to show up. <laughs> I have five kittens that have some type of intestinal parasite going on and I've dewormed them and it's not helping and it's such a mess and I'm like afraid to go in there so I'm like taking a break from laundry and bathing and washing stuff so I kind of needed to take the time to do the show where I could out of everything that's happening anyway. What did I say we're doing October project? Planning October projects. It's one of those days where I'm just gonna enjoy my iced coffee and that's that's all I'm gonna do. Squirrel. That's all I'm gonna do today. Okay, so <clears throat> should we start with whips? Um my first whip is being frogged. Um my first whip is uh, the nutmeg sweater that we I I always say we, it's just me. I modified to be a v-neck and that really was not the problem. Well, it was kind of the problem because, well, remember I was talking to you about the ratios of your starts. So that's your, the back of your neck, the sleeve, and then, well, there's not really a front of your neck because it's worked into a v-neck, but it's basically the same as your back neck, right? But you start with one and one to make the v-neck. Um, the V-neck I like, it was, it was, uh, higher than this, so it could have gone lower. It wouldn't have been a problem for me, uh, cause I wear these, so it would just come over this. So I wasn't, but I, I wanted it to, the V-neck to end before this sleeve, before I separate it for sleeves. Does that make sense? My problem with this, I have two problems that I cannot go forward with. The first problem is this neck is a bit high when I put it on, um, it came up higher on my neck than I wanted it to, which is weird because I don't like a low neck on the back. I don't like it. I like it to be like where your spine bumps are. You know what I mean? Like I like it to be on my, I don't like it down, you know, down on my neck. I like it up on my neck, but this was so high up, even with curling that I felt like I couldn't do any type of finishing around the neck. 
and I wanted to finish the neck part because it looks kind of like how these look and this is fine for top but like for a sweater I kind of wanted it to look a little bit more polished um, I marked the mid stitch <laughs> just so I would have a reference um, so this I don't know if you can probably not see but here is the sleeve is right here and then this comes up higher so like curved up higher so I don't know it's weird because it was all started on the same you know but I think I, I needed more arm stitches out of that beginning and then maybe that would have I don't know <coughs> this is why I'm, I'm taking a break from this while I think about where to go next um because the actual number did fit and i did like the fit around the chest so my chest number's good my arm numbers are not good um <coughs> so leaving 12 inches was not enough i need 13. um so i started the other sweater the other i'm sorry the other sleeve with 13. so i added i think I want to say I added four stitches, I think, um, to give me an extra inch or so. <coughs> um, and that was okay. My problem is, like I thought, the d drop, the arm oh, depth isn't enough. It's too tight on the armpit, so when I go like this, I don't have enough room in my armpit. I have enough room here now, but not in through here. So... I'm not sure what to do there. I'm not sure. So it looks like I need to rework the whole math of the raglans of the yoke. I, ha I have to rework that math to somehow work. So if you have any suggestions <laughs> on ratios or anything, I know, I know nitpicks has when I think it's Elim Elizabeth Zimmerman's thing. Um, I'm going to look at that and see what she says because the first one I did, was Templar, Karen Templar from the Improv. I did hers and it didn't work either. So I'm gonna look at Elizabeth Zimmerman's one. So that is not going to be finished right now. Um, I'm just putting it away because it's too much for me to handle right now. <laughs> like I'm just like, I don't wanna think, I've I've spent so much time thinking about that and reworking the math that I, I need to walk away for a little bit. So I'm going to focus on getting my other two whips done before next week. Um, so those whips are, number one is the Burdock, Burdock, Burdock Shawl by Folks and Friends, <coughs> which you're not going to see anything because it's black. Uh, but this is the one that I modified the, the spine stitches. I love it. It is, I'm only on the second ball. I'm only on the second ball. It's, it's like an actual, like, shawl. It is to my elbows. It is perfectly good shawl length. But we're going all the way with this baby. It's going to take me forever. I fully expect to still be working on this for October. Uh, so, yeah, this episode's going to be a little bit different. We're not doing as much as we usually do. I'm also going to show you what I had planned for October, and we'll see what's going on. Um, so this is only second ball, and I have two more in black and then two more in purple, but the purple is um, a, a, a lace edging that you then work, uh, I think it's side to side. So you're, you're not working rows this way it'll be worked perpendicular at a right angle so I'll be working off of this to do the thing I'm pretty sure I read ahead I'm pretty sure that's what I mean I read ahead a few weeks ago so I don't really remember I've never done that before well I guess Stephen West shallography kind of counts as that because you worked off so I have done that before but not lace just garter um so anyway I am loving this. I love the stitch is, what did I say? It was a C2 left and C2 right, cabled two. 
Um, so much fun to do. Very, very fun. And I love that it gives a detail. It doesn't... I mean, it looks different than the other one, but not, not enough that anyone would notice but me would be like, oh, you did not do the stitch provided. It looks similar. It's just instead of a bobble stitch, like a cluster stitch, it is a cable, which I like better. And it's more fun to do. So I don't mind um, doing little things like that. it'll get it's getting me through. I absolutely love working on this. I don't even mind the pearl back. I think I'm gonna when there's like 600 stitches on it. Um, I don't remember what the stitch count is. I just like, yeah. <coughs> oh, so that is going <coughs> very well. Sorry, I went to the dentist yesterday, and they filled like three teeth, three of my three in a row, and um, it still feels weird. And <coughs> you know, I have issues, so I'm feeling weird in my mouth. You can hear that truck, can't you? I'm sure you can. Okay. My third whip is my DK knit top. And what did I say? This is Uru Yarns. Cotton Basic. Colorway is Stardust. It's 100% organic Pima cotton. Um, I love this color. I love this color so much. It's a it's a more blue than purple. It's a purpley blue. It's very, very cool toned. I absolutely love it. And I love the variegation or the tonality, tonality, tonalness, tonality. I don't know. Uh, in the, in the stuff. Um, I hate this yarn still. I mean, I've, I've just started the back. I've, I'm not enjoying this at all. Um, which is great because if I have the choice between this and the you know, stop shawl with the purling all the way to the back. I usually pick the shawl, but this will be done next week, I'm sure, for our finished. Um, this is a supernatural yarn bags. I love her bags, they are great for like um, one skein projects. If you like zippered bags, I really, and I've never zipped up my project in this. It's got a nice, um, the the um, what do you call this boxed corner really fits the cake. The cake fits well in that, which is always the concern when I have a bag is, is, is the cake going to fit well in it? And it fits well in this bag. I just thought I'd tell you because I I accidentally showed it to you. And it's some cool little snake motif. I love snakes. Um, <coughs> okay, so those are my whips. Two whips and... You guys, last week I forgot I had a finished item, <laughs> which I've never forgotten to finish it, but it's so small and in my thing that I totally forgot that it was here. Like the, like I think later that I'm like, oh my God, I forgot I had a finished item. So this, this is not what this was. Knit Crate, um, Knitology Wisp, which is... DK weight, 236 yards, 100 grams, 100% merino. So this is a non-superwash merino. This color is rainfall. And this is nightfall? Rainfall? Nightfall? Skyfall. Yes, isn't that strange? Okay. <clears throat> this, if you remember, was our inspiration for this month's dye project which is the burdock shawl but we haven't even got to the purple yet so <laughs> I don't think that's gonna be done in time this is a gorgeous gorgeous like royal purple um it's more blue than red which is how I see royal purple I know it's, I was just reading something where someone said royal purple was a red and I don't feel that royal purple is a ready purple. I always felt that royal purple was like a pure purple, like neither really red nor blue, but both. But this is a cool toned purple. It's very purple. Um, I do lean towards um, preferring a blue purple because I like cooler tones of colors. Um, so as I do for my DK tops, I work it. I haven't even tried this on. I blocked it, but I have not worn it because it's wool and it's hot. <laughs> um, so I, what I've since done with the 
DK tops is I do 30 rows of ribbing, 30 rounds of ribbing. Once I hit the ribbing here, like we do our cups, I haven't shown you this pattern yet, but it's similar to the worsted. Um, but here I do 30 rounds. And I don't have a number for the worsted tops because those I typically do by weight. And I'm going to change that because some of them come out too short. And um, I'm going to have to come up with an actual number uh, to do that. Uh, so I got to figure out what 30 is on here and then figure out how many that would be on the worsted. Um, but I don't ha ha know where my notes are for the DK. <laughs> That's why I didn't show it to you the other day. I don't, I don't actually have my notes for I don't know where. I have them. I just don't know where they are. So anyway, that is our finished item. Um, just a cropped. This is a cropped is what we're doing for the one we're doing the cotton basic one we're doing now. I'm doing all cropped ones for right now um, until I can until I'm not sweating all the time because I'm just sweating. So this hormonal changes are ridiculous. Okay, so what's next? Okay, so October projects. Are you ready for this? Y'all ready for this? Okay, so <coughs> October is the last month of fall for me. Let's not forget. So October, November, November starts September, October, November. November starts winter for me. So this is our last planning fall. Um, month so what I'm going to show you is what I wanted to, to do this month because I had two projects that I was gonna do and one is this and I'm showing you because they go together so well and I'm upset I'm not doing them so it'll probably be next October um, this is for bin fiber co this is a muck a muck a muck and this um, I showed this to you earlier this year um, it is like a, it's green, brown, I was going to say black, but not really black. It's a nice brown, it's a cool tone brown. It's not like a gross brown. Um, well, maybe not cool tone, but it's not like a tanny brown. It's a deep brown. I like a dark brown, like a bark of a tree brown, but I don't like tan or lighter I just don't. I like a dark. I'll go with a dark brown. This is a dark brown. Love it. Um, then we have uh, reds, pinks, a little bit of an orange, and s these green tones too. The dark green, the lighter green, a little bit of peach. I wanted something that was fall-ish. And I will say I have bought from Fiber or Forbidden Fiber Co. before, and I, I'm not the biggest fan there these this looks very very saturated on the thing but in person it's not it's dulled and i found that to be true with a lot of their colors that it's it's just not as vibrant as it looks here it's so dull it's so much duller like these reds aren't red they're pink it's like a mauve it's not like this deep apple red it's not at all it's a pink um, I have another one of their, there was, it was green and purple and it just looks so washed out. And on the, on their website, they, the colors look fantastic on a screen, but when you're in person, it's just not as, not as saturated, which is a shame, but still I'll wear it. I'll use it. Um, really do like the colorway, even if it isn't as saturated. It looks so much better. It really does, because it's not red like that. It's a, it's a mauve. It's a for sure mauve, even a little bit of like a light pinky purple. There's no red there. How weird that that looks like so red, red, red. It's not. Um, <coughs> anyway, I was going to do a Stephen West, I think um, the hibernation. One of them that he had just re-released uh, that was a single skein, and then he was like, you can do two skates. And I think this one had twisted something I, but I never got that far because I was just like I knew I was gonna use 
uh, just two color, you know, a single color shawl, the two skeins, I was going to work them back and forth. Um, and in addition to that, for our knit top, I was going to do this and I thought, oh my God, look at this per perfect color palette for October. Like how perfect for fall, how perfect. Um, this is blue sky, I'm gonna go down to one. This is blue sky fiber worsted wool, wool stock. Um, this color is deep velvet. It is a really nice burgundy. Um, These are 50 gram balls, I'm pretty sure. Because remember I showed you this, it came in a 150 gram skein, so I just made one top. It was very easy. They did not have this color in the 150 at my LYS, which is around the table yarns. Give them a little shout out. Um, so these are 50 gram. Let's just put the thing over the. I hate when they do that. 50 gram. She put the price tag over the do you hate that I can't tell what it is 123 yards maybe 50 grams 100% fine highland wool so of course I got three of them these are 850 a piece so I paid I don't know what nine nine times three twenty seven whatever for a skein and a half. God, that's a lot. This is though, like I have said before, this is my favorite Peruvian Highland base. It is more expensive than Knit Picks. Not around the fur, that's a Deftones album. Wool of the Andes uh, is a 100% Highland wool. Um, so is Cascade 220. Um, not the Cascade 220 Superwash. I think that is Marina. No, don't listen to me. The Cascade 220, the one that is not Superwash, is Peruvian Highland Wool. That is my favorite, except for this. <laughs> However, this is more expensive. Um, like I said, this is so it's 850 for 50 gram. It's probably less than that. Um, I know my other LYS used to mark stuff up considerably. That I was like. I have to buy this online because even with shipping it's cheaper. <laughs> um, so I, I only bought from her if, if it was something I would I could afford the markup on. Like Cascade Heritage Sock, I can afford the markup on that because that's like a $10 yarn. Um, anyway, so eight fifty dollars for 50 grams is kind of expensive. That's like $14 a skein, which I guess isn't that expensive, but it's more than Cascade 220 and more than Wool of the Andes, I think, too. I'm trying to think of Wool of the Andes. It's like six, no, it's like three something for a 50 gram ball, right? I get confused with Wool of the Andes because I buy it bare a lot, like off Amazon, because <laughs> it's cheaper. <laughs> yeah, but I don't work with that. Uh, wool of the Andes is not, it's probably my least favorite of the Highland wools that I've tried. This is my favorite. It's a little too expensive though, but it is my favorite for all of them. It's getting really dark out there. <laughs> it's not supposed to rain for four more hours, so. Okay, you can hear that truck, can't you? I wonder if I should take a break. Okay, let's just trudge along. Um, I love this color. What did I say it was called? Red velvet? Deep velvet. Deep velvet. It is such a gorgeous uh, burgundy. It's got light and darker specks. I'm not sure if it's black. It's almost heathered. A lot of their colors are, are almost heathered, um, which just gives you depth to your project, which I really, I really, I like tonals. I, I would prefer a heather, to be honest, a heather or a marled. I like that better, like the barber pulling. I like that better. So those are the two projects I'm not doing this month, but that I had planned for this month. And the reason I'm not doing it is because I decided I am going to do the famous Stephen West's um, mystery, mystery Knit Along this year, Twists and Turns. I decided I'm going to do it. And the reason I'm going to do it is because I, my husband pointed this, he's like, you had a lot of fun last year. Like you had so much fun and I need some fun. So I'm just going to do it. 
because it it was I remember being very excited to wake up on those days to get the clue and to work on it and by God some crap has happened this week uh, one of them being I was at the dentist for an hour and a half yesterday getting teeth drilled and I don't do well at the dentist and it brought up a lot of you know my PTSD stuff and um, along with I, I got some family news that really opened up some old wounds so I'm not in a good place right now I kind of feel like this weather out here <laughs> so this is so like I'm feeling it I'm I'm actually ready for the for the thunderstorms like I am so ready to have some rain and sit out here and just listen to the rain and smell the rain and I love rain it's and I love fall rain that's probably my favorite rain is fall rain and just like listen to some typo negative and let it rain uh, in the fall and I'm happy that's all I need all I need and maybe some iced coffee so um we're not doing those I am going to do the mcal which means <coughs> it's going to be our dye project so here I have five skeins I've showed you this um when I was going over what I was deciding I wanted to use this is from yarn undyed this is ac wood I don't know if that is oh it's called you don't she's sitting on the dog button this is 70% um, baby alpaca, 20% silk, and 10% cashmere. This is a luxury base. Um, and I have a few bags of these. So other than making some sweaters, I don't really have a plan for this. So it's kind of just sitting there. So I'm like, I can, I can spare a five skein of this. Um, and I'm, I'm actually kind of wanting to use it as a... I work with it as a shawl and dye it up before I do a whole sweater. <laughs> so I have been thinking about, um, oh, you want the 400 meters. So that's 438 yards for 100 grams. There's five hanks, five 100 gram hanks. So this is, we're going to do um, this luxury base. <laughs> Very excited. Um, as for colors, I don't want to tell you. <laughs> I don't want to tell you, but I will say, I think I already showed you stuff. Um, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell you the color. I'm not going to tell you the color. I'm not telling you the color. There'll be a surprise for dye project. Cause I like to leave dye project a surprise. I think it's more. So that means this dye project, you're getting three colorways because we have the main color, the contrast color and the accent color. So that's three different colorways that I have to come up with in two weeks. <laughs> that means next weekend I have to, we'll be in the dye pots dying. But I do think I know where I'm going. I think I do know. Yes, my point is wrong. I think I do know where I'm going with that. I'm, I think. The, di the d question is if it's going to be speckled or tonal. And the reason for that, why I don't know, I mean, I want to speckle. The problem is with this fiber content, there is no wool. There's no wool and there's no nylon, and that's what I'm used to dyeing is wool and nylon, okay? Wool with a little bit of nylon, usually superwash wool, a little bit of nylon. I know how dye reacts to the, that fiber content. This fiber content, 70% baby alpaca, 20% silk, 10% cashmere. Okay, cashmere is not a big deal. Uh, but the silk, I don't do silk, even though it's 20%. Is that going to be a lot? I don't know. But I'm worried about that 70% of baby alpaca because I'm not sure how well you can speckle alpaca. I'm not sure how well it's going to speckle for me. So what I'm doing is I'm starting with my accent color first because that is one, just one um, color. It's one skein, one color. So my accent color, I'm going to dye first. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to see, because that, that's only one color, I'm going to speckle it and see how it takes speckles. And then, because that, that is just a single color, but I want it to be tonal. So I'm hoping I'll at least get some tonal. I'm not sure because from what I've seen in alpaca, it really likes to be a solid color. 
um, like when I over dyed my stuff, it was very, well, I dyed it black, so that's really not going to say anything. That really doesn't give me any clue. Um, I'm not sure how well it speckles. That's something I've not seen um, done enough to say that alpaca speckles well. Do you know? Do you know if alpaca speckles well? Um, so I'm hoping I can at least get a tonal in. If not, we'll have solid color. But I'm going to start with the accent color because I do know what that's going to be. And I'm going to try to speckle it. And depending on how that comes out, then I'll just, I mean, I have an idea for the other two, but it, it all hinges on if it's speckled or not. If it's not able to be speckled, I'll have to switch up what I'm doing. So yes, we are doing um, the MCAL, which is also going to be our dye project. So you'll get three colors. It's going to be cool. Um, then for sure, what I will be doing is an, another cropped um, DK uh, top. And this is the other cotton basic that I just showed you, the, per the bluey purple one. This is called, this is the same thing. It's called pavement. The colorway is called pavement. So it's the same thing, just instead of a blue, it's gray. It's a light and dark gray, which I really like. This is kind of inspiring me for the MCAL maybe. Um, really like this too. So this will be a cropped top. Um, and then I'm not sure because remember, we still are going to have the burdock shawl and the Stephen West twist and turn shawl. So I'm kind of not, Ooh, did the truck just drive away? So I'm not sure then what I want to do because that's two pretty big projects plus my crop top project that I do at night. So it doesn't really leave me much time for another project, right? So I showed you this before, my cash Aaron hat that is too big. Um, I will probably redo this this month just because I, I'll have the time and it's stuck in it in the round. It could not be easier. It's literally... You start at a pinhole, you work up, which I won't even have to go back all the way to the pinhole. I can stop when I reach whatever my number is going to be. I have to go back to my notes and see what I did. Because um, I'm going to redo this. Um, then I don't know if uh, if I will, because I know the MCAL is going to last the whole month. Um, I don't know what's going to happen with the burdock. If I get the bird, is the burdock going to take me two months to do six skeins of a shawl? I don't know. I'm going to play it by ear. If not, if we finish the burdock, I will probably restart the bulky sweater. That's what my, I'm thinking. I will restart the bulky sweater. If however, because I would rather do the workout, the bulky sweater first because it goes faster than a worsted weight. Like I do have a plan for a worsted weight um, cardigan. I'm going to do, here I'll show it to you. Harvest by Tin Can Knits, which I'm sure you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, because, it, no, I don't want to pick that. Because um, it's beginner friendly and even though I've made sweaters before, they've never really come out. This is a free pattern by um, Tin Can Knits, and it looks like this. It looks very close to the Zephyr that I wanted to do, but the Zephyr had a pattern that I didn't like. So this starts around the back of the neck, and you get this ribbing. And then after you work uh, the back part of the neck, you pick up along the back of it, and then start working down from there. And then as you work, you're working the ribbing in with your work. So this isn't a button band. You don't go back later and pick this up and work it, which I absolutely hate to do. I hate pick going back later and picking up stitches. I'd much rather work it as I'm doing. Um, there is a Zephyr pattern that I have that um, is the yarn I bought for this. Um which I'll put a link to the Zephyr in case you want it. I'm not be being able to find it. Here, you know what? I know it's in my... And I, I did start the Zephyr. 
my problem was I listened to someone in the project page of it that said um, that the yarn I had bought, Barocco Vintage, I actually bought it for that, was perfect. Don't ever let someone tell you that an acrylic blend is perfect if you don't like working with acrylic. I don't like working with acrylic at all. Uh, this is the Zephyr. So it's similar. Um, but this stitch I did not like doing, and you couldn't see it on my yarn because it was black. This is by Tori Gerbiz, 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 Gerbiz. Um, it's a paid pattern. I don't know how much it is. Um, crap, I can't find it. Here it is. It is $7. I paid $7 for it. I won't even make it. I do believe it has a um, not raglan sleeve. I believe it has, yeah, contiguous sleeves. The contiguous sleeve that is, oh, fuck. The contiguous sleeve. Um, so anyway, I'm going, I'm thinking of doing the harvest with the yarn I was going to do before that. So I'm going to let them do, and I will come back and show you the yarn that I plan to do that with. Okay. Okay, so as I was saying, it got brighter out. <laughs> um, when I had decided to do the Zephyr, I had bought this yarn. Um, this is Cloudborn Highland Worsted. Um, it is a, yeah, worsted weight. Just in black. It's a two ply, so it's got a bit of a, um, you're not going to be able to see, a little t a high twist like a higher twist, that high twist thing where it's kind of bumpy. Um, I thought it would be good for the stitch definition. Um, this is 100% fine Highland wool, my favorite wool, but where's, this is just the episode of Highland wool, I guess. Um, so this is not super wash. Um, 221 yards to 100 grams. The truck is still out front. I thought it left. That must have been a different truck. Um, Oh, it says made with love in Peru. That's so cute. Um, so this is a non super wash wool. I got sweater quantity of this to make the Zephyr. And then when I was looking through the projects on the Zephyr, someone said they had used Barocco Vintage, which is um, a cr part, partly acrylic. I think it's wool, acrylic, and nylon, which is a little too, too much man-made for me, um, too much plastic for me. Um, and what I me mean by that is too much, too much plastic yarn overheats me. Like it traps, I like wool because if you sweat, you don't end up cold. You know, like when you, like, okay, when you get hot flashes and you wake up in the middle of the night, and you're drenched in sweat and you're cold because you were hot, but now you're cold. Like that cold sweat that covers you, that's what acrylic does to me. Acrylic polyester nylon, if there's too much content, too much f of that fiber in the yarn, that's what it does to me. Wool does not do that to me. Wool is like, wool is different. Wool uh, doesn't overheat me, it keeps me warm, and I think it wicks moisture away so you're not left being, you know, with a cold sweat. I was just petting Lola and now I've got white fur everywhere. So anyway, someone on the project page of the Zephyr used Barocco Vintage and said, this is the perfect yarn for this sweater. I think it was green. So I ordered a sweater quantities. Against my better judgment, I ordered a sweater quantity of black Barocco Vintage. And I knew better, and I did it anyway. And I was, I was so excited, I started the Zephyr, and I was like, I hate this yarn. <laughs> It's too much plastic. So I don't like the feel of working with it. I just don't enjoy it. And then I know I'm not going to enjoy the finished product. So um, I also did not enjoy the stitch, that decorative stitch. It's done the same way. You do the thing and then you pick up stitches and then you work that the same time you're working the rest of the sweater, which I like because you work it in the same. I just did not like that stitch. It wasn't fun to do and then it didn't look good to me anyway. And I don't know, it's probably just, number one, the yarn I used, and number two, that it was black, so you couldn't see it. 
So that's why I'm thinking the harvest instead, because it's just garter stitch, like way easier. I'm still going to do this. This I want to do the same fit and the closure, uh, a similar closure as the Zephyr, but use the, the harvest pattern instead, but style it like the Zephyr. So I, I have planned to do one in a smaller size in this non super wash and wear this next to the skin. So I can wear this like with these tops uh, because I love non super wash wool and I love wearing it close to my skin. Um, then for the Baraco vintage, I'm thinking of making the harvest again, but making it in a in a bigger size so that I can wear that like over thin sweaters. Okay, so like I could wear that over fingering weight sweaters or maybe even over well, would I need something to wear over regular sweaters? I think if I'm wearing like a regular sweater, like a bulky sweater or a worsted weight sweater, I can just wear a shawl. I think I'll be warm enough. So maybe wear it over, maybe make a medium instead of a small and wear that over fingering weight sweater. So I would have another layering piece because I don't mind wearing um, a higher plastic content. Um, if it's not against my skin, because especially if I have a layer of wool in between, that wool will wick away my sweat and not leave me cold. So then I, then no part of the plastic is actually touching my skin, which I think will be fine. I'm also considering um, using the Baraco Vintage as a, a crochet sweater. So I think it's gonna depend, it would still be a cardigan, I think it's going to depend how much I like the harvest and how much I wear it. So I wanted to, to make it in the cloud born first. So it's all going to depend on if I think I can um, change the bulky sweater to be the fit I want because that one will go faster. I will have a sweater faster. And again, when you make when you have problems, it's easier to fix them faster to fix them because you have less stitches, less rows to work. I would just rather do it on a bulky weight first. But if I'm feeling that I don't want to deal with the math and I just want to follow a pattern, I'm just going to start the harvest. So I will update you on which I actually plan to do when the decision comes. Um, but that's where I'm at for October. So this is the end of our fall project. So for my fall projects, we're not going to have made a sweater. It's just, I don't, I don't think we're going to finish a sweater. I don't see that bulky sweater being done while I'm doing the MCAL and the burdock shawl. And I really want to have those two things more than I want that sweater. Does that make sense? However, that cardigan, I want a lot because I would wear that a lot because I wear a lot of robes <laughs> in the winter. I just wear a robe. I wear a fleece robe and I would, I absolutely hate wearing fleece because it makes me sweat. <laughs> so I'd much rather have something wool to wear. Next week is um, September finished objects, which I'm not sure how many we have. <laughs> I've been really lax about keeping track of everything I've been doing. I think um, this time of year, once the sun starts to change, something happens with me and it's not SAD um, seasonal affective disorder I've we've gone through that diagnosis it's not that I love a, I get diagnosed with things and then they're like oh it's not that when none of the treatments work they go well it can't be that but then nobody knows what it is what it is um, I'm not sure if it's P PTSD or not which it could be it could be you know psychosomatic but it happens every year every year I get really depressed around this time and I have a hard time uh, doing things. So I, I've also noticed that I've been really, um, my new feelings are bugging me so much. If you don't have sensory issues, you don't even know how lucky you are. You don't, oh gosh, they're so lucky. <laughs> anyway, what was I saying? I keep getting distracted. Oh, I've been really stressing myself out with 
how much I'm working and um, not hitting goals that I set, like not finishing a sweater again and not finishing, like I finished one thing last month, I think, or whatever. So I'm trying to, to not be so hard on myself and not work myself too hard because I'm, I'm starting to miss out on the actual enjoyment. And I do enjoy planning. I do enjoy planning and I do enjoy the knitting most of the time. But I, I, I don't need to stress myself out for something that, number one, I'm not even making money on. <laughs> And all of my deadlines are self-imposed. I don't need to finish anything for September. I just want to, I guess, mark things as what I've what I've gotten done. I'm debating getting rid of that as a recurring episode altogether. But I really like having a place where I show everything I finished. And I think I think it's also helpful for people that might be finding me for the first time to see. Um, people love finished finished object episodes they absolutely love it and I love doing them so I think I'm gonna keep even if there's one thing I talk about oh well right I'm gonna finish at least one thing right and then sometimes I finish like a bunch of things and sometimes there's one thing so my point is I'm trying to lessen the uh, pressure I put on myself especially uh, coming into the into the depression seasons (laughs) the depression months Um, anyway it's doom and gloom. I can hear it starting to, um, thunder. (sighs) Plus, I know I have to give at least one kitten a bath, um, and I gotta feed them, so I gotta get out of here. So, come back next week for finished items, and, um, you're probably gonna be looking at two crop tops, I'm assuming. (laughs) If you have any tips for a V-neck sweater, bulky, please let me know. Feel free to comment, leave a comment or anything. Um, I'd love to interact with you. Um, come back next week. Okay, it's, it's starting to rain, so I'm going to get out of here. Uh, take care of yourselves. I'll see you next week. Goodbye.